You are attempting to access Terminal 7 at Site 119. By continuing, you are confirming that you have permission to access this file, have submitted your last will and testament to the SCP Foundation HR Department, have said goodbye to all of your family and loved ones, and consent to the probability of a swift, painful death. You are not currently under any threat, but continuing to access this file will change that. Please look into the screen to begin scan. Scan complete. Identity confirmed. Welcome back, Agent William Miller. You are now accessing file SCP-274. Four. Tattletail. Warning. The threat is approaching rapidly. You have a limited amount of time to review the contents of this file. Remember that this terminal has been permanently contained. Mobile Task Force members are aware of your location and on standby, but they will likely not be able to save you. It is only a matter of time now. SCP-2774 is a bipedal humanoid creature with a height of 2 meters. Its face is covered with a torn white burlap cloth with a large aluminum zipper across its mouth. Though its true name is unknown, it is to be referred to by codename Tattletail. The creature is extremely dangerous and hostile. It has been determined to target anyone who attempts to investigate it or learn the nature of its identity. It cannot be restrained or prevented from reaching its target. Once it has its sights set on you, you cannot hide, you cannot run. There is no escape. The entity is currently uncontained, but steps have been taken to limit its potential for damage. Only this terminal has complete read and edit access to the file. Once someone has linked with the terminal, all members of MTF Epsilon 99 are stationed at the entrance to the containment cell. The entity may not be discussed outside of the containment cell. If you speak about the Tattletale entity outside of this room, you will be immediately terminated. Once you have accessed this file, you are considered lost. Tattletale was first encountered in the Yurtek Nexus. The Nexus is an underground freeport where a number of anomalous entities live without fear of exposure. It's also a network of underground tunnels used for smuggling and other unsavory business. Following a series of unsolved murders and disappearances, the Global Occult Coalition reached out to the Foundation for help. A research team was deployed to investigate consisting of Agent Jamie Green, Adam Smith, Sammy Radcliffe, Dr. Stephen House, and Agent William Miller. Agent Miller was outfitted with a body cam, which captured the following events. Miller met with the rest of the team in an underground house in the Yurtik Nexus. Inside, he found a blood-stained room thrown into chaos, items turned over and scattered across the room. There was an unidentified body found inside of the house. The deceased suffered from deep wounds across their chest that tore off skin and muscle, revealing the organs and broken bones beneath. Their face was riddled with large bite marks, and their nose was missing entirely. Though there were bits of flesh and blood all throughout the room, the nose was not found. While searching the room, Miller found a blood-spattered note with the words, Help, Workers, written along with a phone number. As the group continued to investigate, they suddenly heard something moving and scratching in the walls. Tension began to rise. Was the killer still in their midst? Did they need to act now before it had a chance to give them the same gruesome fate? Radcliffe shot at the wall and a rat crawled out. They were safe, for now. The body couldn't be identified and was classified as Entity Victim 12. The note recovered from the crime scene led the Foundation to an attempted human and non-human entity trafficking scheme. Eight missing persons and creatures were recovered from a warehouse and interviewed. This new chapter of the investigation left the team with more questions than answers, and after an anonymous tip, the task force reached out to an unnamed lizard man, believed to be a member of the mysterious Fae who was reported to have helpful information. The lizard informed agents Miller and Radcliffe that he had seen something troubling. He couldn't remember the specific details, but a monster had come to SCP-4000, an enchanted forest and the home of the Fae, and had spoken to someone the lizard man had once known. He followed them home, but found only a mangled corpse and a room drenched in blood. One detail stood out in particular. The lizard man said that his dead friend had been robbed of a name. 
left a nameless husk. Whatever had killed them, it had erased their very identity. Even the interviewee, who had once considered the victim a friend, could no longer remember who they were. This would be nightmarish for anyone, but especially a member of the Fae, as names hold a great deal of importance for them. When agents Radcliffe and Miller returned from conducting their interviews, they were informed that four new anomalous murders had occurred in their absence. Each body had the same wounds, deep lacerations on the torso, and large chunks of the face bitten off. This was troubling enough, but even more concerning was a series of unauthorized changes to the Foundation's employee database, which occurred at the same time as the killings. Four employee personnel files had been inexplicably deleted to match the four unidentified bodies that were found. There was reason to believe that these four new victims had all been Foundation personnel, but no one could remember their names, and no one recognized their faces. The remaining records confirmed that there had been seven members of the task force dispatched to handle these unsolved murders. Four were gone, lost from the world and from collective memory. Now only three remained. Sammy Radcliffe, Stephen House, and William Miller. Miller and Radcliffe met to discuss this new development and realized that they were being hunted. Something new, they were investigating it, and it was taking out the research team one by one. Four down, three to go. The remaining researchers were ordered to return to Site-119 for round-the-clock protection and surveillance. Stephen House ignored these orders and locked himself away in a safe house located within the Nexus. Radcliffe insisted that she and Miller follow their orders and leave House behind, but Miller refused. He would not leave a man behind, not after losing the rest of the team, even if he couldn't remember them. Miller made his way to the safe house and arrived to find the door already open. He entered the building, searching for his missing colleague. He called out, Stephen? And are you here? But there was no response. His path wound between rows of shelves, down pitch black narrow hallways that seemed to go on forever. Just when he thought Stephen might already be lost, he heard a loud crash coming from up ahead. He followed the sound down the hall, drawing his gun just in case. He turned to the left and saw another open door. Inside there was a small janitor's closet. A bucket was knocked over, and water had spilled all over the floor. As Miller scanned the room, his eyes fell on a limp body. It was Stephen House. Miller ran to his fallen colleague's side, crouching down to check his wounds. House's body was horribly damaged, with claw marks from his shoulder to his hip. There were puncture wounds across his hands and arms, and his leg was broken, twisted around until bone showed through the torn skin. Afraid of what he would find, Miller reached down to check the man's pulse, but a hand stopped him. Stephen House was still alive. He struggled to speak, saying, I'm not useless. I swear I'm not. And then one chilling word, run. Behind Miller, something let out an inhuman screech. He spun around to see what made the sound and saw a creature lurching toward him. It was tall, humanoid in shape, but distinctly monstrous. A zipper across its face was unzipped to reveal teeth stained black and red with blood. The creature jumped on top of him, knocking him to the ground. He thrashed and fought back, trying to throw the monster off of him, but it sank its teeth into his exposed forearm with a sickening crunch. Fighting through the pain, Miller fired his gun with his other hand, hitting the creature in the neck. It screamed and recoiled, allowing Miller to climb back onto his feet and fire several more shots. The creature scuttled up the wall toward the ceiling, evading Miller's gunfire and advancing toward him. Miller took a step back, but slipped in the blood on the floor and fell onto his injured arm. Helpless, Miller watched as the entity dove down at him, snarling and ready to devour him. Before it reached him, the crack of a gunshot rang out. Miller looked up to see Agent Radcliffe holding a shotgun. She had come to save him. The two ran back into the hall, the entity close behind them, and took cover behind a large shelving unit. As the entity approached, hunting for them, they tried to determine what to do next. Miller was frozen in place, shaken from all he had seen. Radcliffe told him to run for the door. She stepped out from behind their cover and drew the attention of the entity. She fired several more shots at it, then turned to see if Miller had made it to safety. As Miller begged Radcliffe to run, her shotgun jammed. She had no time to escape, no way to defend herself. Her words before the monster descended on her were, You're not supposed to let me die like this. With nothing else he could do, 
Miller ran. He ran as fast as he could, cradling his damaged arm. Listening to Radcliffe's screams turned to wet gurgles, and then silence. He made it out of the building, where a team of Foundation personnel were waiting to usher him to safety. He was taken back to Site-119 and placed under 24-hour surveillance. The entity he encountered was entered into the system. File complete. We hope it was worth it, Agent Miller. There isn't much time left. It's coming. You know that. Any minute now, it will creep up behind you, then sink its teeth into your skin, devouring your body and your name in one fatal blow. What is it? Is it simply a monster with an insatiable appetite for human lives? Perhaps it was once a human too, a murder victim left unseen and unsolved, that transformed into a creature intent on erasing others. Perhaps it was an idea made real by people's fear of it, and that is why it is so afraid of being known. If the puzzle is solved, if it is truly understood, perhaps the creature will simply cease to exist. There is screaming outside of the room, gunfire pounding on the walls. Protection is wearing thin, so think, what was it? What is it? You only have a few moments left. What will you leave behind once it takes you? Maybe it was fear. All of the victims were running from something, hiding from an invisible demon. Pain, feelings of inadequacy, the sheer terror of the unknown. Everyone trying to run, to deny their nightmares and pretending that sleeping with the lights on would be enough. But it never is. The darkness always comes. Here it comes. Congratulations, Agent Miller. You have officially completed the Tattletail simulation. You were successful in acting under pressure, showing dedication to the mission and the cause, and valuing the lives of your colleagues over your own safety. Your results show high intelligence, problem solving, and critical thinking skills. The test was administered by Agent Sammy Radcliffe, Agent Jamie Green, and Dr. Stephen House. Though your work was impressive, you have some areas for improvement. You did not follow protocol when engaging with the Tattletail Entity, and you failed to prevent the simulated deaths of Radcliffe, Green, and House. Better luck next time. Still, you displayed admirable selflessness and devotion to the Foundation's mission of knowledge, information, and containment of anomalies. You have been approved for fieldwork going forward. Now is a good time to celebrate. Many others who were given this test were not so lucky. The past 50 subjects to complete this simulation failed under pressure and died of heart failure when the fear got the best of them. But not you. You have the makings of a truly great agent here at the SCP Foundation. We'll be in touch soon. Now go check out Procedure 110 Montauk Revealed Fear Alone SCP-231 Tale and SCP-1025 Encyclopedia of Common Diseases for more SCPs that'll mess with your head.